Well, hello. Welcome to the special segment on our new show. Today, we will be interviewing Sybil Ludington, a post-American war heroine who is like a mini Paul Revere. Now, we can't actually bring Sybil to the stage because she is dead, but we'll, be, we'll have the chance to talk to her, her ghost. Please welcome the woman herself, Sybil Ludington. Thank you for having me, Lacey and Petunia. It is a pleasure to be on what you people call these days, um, oh yes, a television. It's our pleasure. Now tell us, what was your feeling like before you left and got married? Well, Petunia, my family life wasn't the easiest. I was born on April 5th, 1761 in Fredericksburg, which is now called Ludingtonville, in the section of the town in Kent in New York. And a fun fact, the town of Ludingtonville was named after me because of my heroic act. What heroic act? Not now, Lacey. I'm just getting into the story of my life. I'll tell you about my heroic act later. Anywho, I was the firstborn child to Abigail and Henry Ludington. My father, Henry, was a man of honor. He volunteered, he volunteered to serve as the militia leader, leader during the British War. He was a man who would do anything for his country, and I loved him so. So, back to my life. A little while after I was born, we moved to Dutchess County, New York, and settled on 229 acres of land. After we settled, my mother gave birth to 11 more children. Eleven. As you can gather, we were all able to do simple household chores and my mother made sure of it. Well, that is fascinating. I have two brothers and a sister that annoy the heck out of me, but I still love them most of the time. Yes, well that must be very difficult with three siblings. <laughs> now to the fun stuff. When I was 23, I was gifted with an incredible husband, Edward Ogden. He was a farmer, an innkeeper, and with Edward I had one beloved son, Henry Ogden. We lived a nice fun life, but a little before my 78th birthday, I died. I died on February 26th, 1839, and if you want to go look me up, you can head to New York and find my tombstone in the old Presbyterian burying ground, burying ground at Patterson, Patterson, New York. Yes, Patterson, New York. The funny thing is though, I'm not Presbyterian. My husband and I were married by a Baptist minister, and we were listed as part of the Presbyterian Church for some odd reason. Yeah, so, anywho, I was married when I was 23. I had a child, and then I died when I was 77, just a few days before my 78th birthday. Pretty sad, but I lived a full life, and I feel like I accomplished so much, and that my family loved me and supported me, and that was just gift enough for me. Well, Sybil, that was quite the story. Now, we will be right back with Sybil Ludington and her telling about her events in the Revolutionary War. Are you struggling with poofy hair? When you get up, is your hair in a knot and you can't get it out? Well, I have got the product for you. Here is a new conditioner that will make your hair silky smooth. Come by Sybil Conditioner for $5.95 plus $2.99 processing and handling. Now, see, once you've used it, your hair will turn out like hers. Uh, Welcome back. So Sybil, tell me, what exactly did you do that helped us win the Battle of Ridgefield? I served in the Revolutionary War and became famous for my horseback riding skills. I helped win, win, win the war when I was in New York by warning the militia that the British troops were coming and going to burn Danbury, Danbury Connecticut. When my father was told that the British were coming to Danbury, it asked for a volunteer. I volunteered to ride through the country and tell the militia to get as many troops as possible. That must have been scary being only 16 years old. I heard a little bit about your ride on the dark night of April 26, 1777, that took you through the towns of Kent Mahavik, bringing you to the Putnam and Dutch counties in New York. But what was it like to be riding all by yourself? That night was tiring, and it included brutal weather. I mean, pouring rain. When I arrived back home, 400 troops were gathered at the Ludington residence to go against and fight the British. It was a long and hard battle, and in the end, we had won. We were all very happy, but relieved that, it, that the battle was over. Well, thank you for telling us all of this, because it inspires me to be more like you. Being only 16 years old and writing for a long time to go retrieve 400 soldiers, that shows gut. Now, thank you for watching, and we will be right back with more. Are you bored of your everyday life? Do you want to turn out like Sybil Ludington? Well, I have the perfect job for you. Become part of the Army today, where excitement is the positive. Go to your nearest militia to enroll today. And we're back. 
Now, I'm not sure if you know this, but Sybil was one of many important leaders in the Revolutionary War because she was able to warn the militia of the attacking, making them more prepared. Yes, she was one of the most inspiring for sure. But what, ha what was it like to win in the Battle of Ridgefield? Well, I received so many thank yous from so many people, but it almost didn't even feel real when General George Washington and General Rochambeau said thank you and shook my hand. Well, I'm sure that was the icing on top of the cake for you, but not only did you save us Americans, you also saved so much more. To me, the most important thing was to save the people, but to save them, I also had to save the food, shelter, and weapons that it took us so long to make. We were able to push the soldiers back into the boats and save our newly created nation. What do you think would have happened if you didn't go or nobody won at all? We definitely would have lost so many more lives and we might not even have won, but I'm glad that we were able to save everyone and everything we fought for. Thank you for sharing some of your insight with us. And we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching and learning with us.